One, two, one, two. This is an, this is an audio test. Welcome back to another Northern Carp Diaries video. And this challenge has been inspired by one of our most treasured viewers who kindly commented on one of our recent videos that me and my, obviously me and Matty were a couple of melts. So, <laughs> which is probably correct. So we've decided to call this challenge a couple of melts. To be fair, we probably are. I like to wrap cheese around my sausage. Being inspired by that guy's lovely comments to call us a couple of melts, it's brought us to a cracking idea to our next challenge. And that is, as the name says, a couple of melts. So basically with this challenge, we've got four of the new Signet Terminal Range PVA products. And with that, we're gonna be choosing two each. Now, give this is a bit of, go on. Do you, say, do, you to, do you wanna sort of say which ones they are yet or? Um, yeah, go on then. So yeah. basically we've got the solid bags, We've got PVA foam nuggets, we've got the PVA mesh, and we've also got the PVA tape. So with it being a bit of a challenge, we thought we'd have a bit of a challenge ourselves, a bit of a competition, friendly competition, of course. Um, and we're gonna set up some distance sticks, and we're gonna see who the fastest to get the 20 wraps. Now, whoever does get fastest to 20 wraps will then be given the option to choose two of the PVA products, nice. leaving the final two for the loser. Well, not loser, we don't like losers in this game so <laughs> but yeah that's basically what this is going to be on this session so i'm really looking forward to this one so without further ado let's get these wraps underway we filming boy is this on did you leave that on yeah it's turned on it just needs to press as soon as i press record on my camera need to get to central right so here we are it's challenge time now I'm not gonna lie, I'm not the quickest at rapping and why we've come up with this idea, I have no clue at all. But I know I can win this and I, I, I am competitive, but so's Jack, so here we go. Oh, 20 wraps. Now, are we gonna start literally pinned up? Make it fair? Okay. You got your timer ready? 20, you say when? Two, three, go. I'll take that. that I'll take that. I think I've absolutely destroyed the tip of my rod. <laughs> You've got 21.70 to beat. So 21.70 to beat. And I'm at a disadvantage because I'm using 10 foot rods, yeah? Okay. Yeah? I mean, the, these, what, if, if, you know, if you weren't here, what I would have done now is just moved them to 10 foot, but you know, each to their own, right. Well, it's all right, you let us know when. Yeah. I'm going to count you at 3, 2, 1, okay? Yeah, okay. Am I going on go? 3, 2, 1. Yeah, 3, 2, 1, then say go. Go. <laughs> go. 3. Yeah. 2. Yeah. 1. Go. What have you done? Yeah, that doesn't matter. It'll give you. No, You're a no, mate. No, I was beating you. That's all it were. Yeah. So if I if I come last at this, right? You all saw that on camera. You cheated and stitched me up. Smash my tips even more. Three, two, three, two, one, go. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> you <laughs> you're shafting me, you. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> oh. <laughs> 20 24.9 Never <laughs> What? Yeah. Mate, I'm just for your condolences. 
Yeah, I bet you are. I'll win it first time. <laughs> Okay, so seeing as I won the challenge, which to be fair, we all knew what was gonna happen anyway. I've got the four products here that we've got for this session and I'm gonna get first choice. So the products that I'm gonna go with this session, um, definitely gonna pick solid PVA bags, I believe. And I think the second product I'm gonna go for is gonna be the PVA tape as well. Um, I can use them combined and if I get the bags, sorted quite quickly and passed off then i'll move on to a different rig and use the pva tape separately but yeah they're the two products i'm going to go with which leave jack the foam and the mesh let's get on the way So just before I took this rod out, obviously I thought I'd just talk through my lead presentation, my rig, my hook baits, but more importantly, the sort of, you know, the whole emphasis of this challenge is the PVA systems that we're gonna be using. So I'm just gonna obviously explain why, and obviously, the, you know, the PVA that I'm using and why I'm using that. Obviously in true fishing fashion, myself and Matt have decided to film the PVA challenge on the wettest day of the year so far, without a shadow of a doubt. You know, we're coming into the back of it, you know, probably I think the hottest heat wave that the UK has sort of ever experienced since records began which you know has been brilliant but very difficult from a fishing point of view but you know jokes aside even though it's raining and it's not ideal for a pva challenge um it's hopefully going to be really good in terms of the actual fishing and hopefully i'm quite confident that we can catch a few as well so yeah if you've seen our recent video um, down at mark pictures waynestone's pool you'll have noticed that my two rod setups were on a, a tubing helicopter setup and um, a rig tubing cog setup as well to be honest that is no different if you haven't seen that video as well by the way i'll leave a link up here so you can watch that later um, but if like i said if you have seen that video then you'll know that we've been fishing with those lead setups and now that we're back on my syndicate ticket i didn't feel that there was any particular reason why i would need to change that i kind of know the bottom out there it's fairly uniform it's fairly clean however at the moment as we speak i'm in a swim known as a dugout i've done a little bit of time in this swim this year and I know that kind of that 12 wraps to the island. So basically the reason why I've stuck with the helicopter setup and not gone for something like a lead clip or like, you know, like a cog on both setups is because the island in front of me is quite dense in terms of vegetation, so there's quite a lot there. So I think that, you know, if there's anything sort of just lying around, any twigs, any things like that, um, a helicopter setup just gives you that sort of added confidence is probably the right word. It gives you the confidence that no matter what you cast it on, you should still be able to be presented anyway. So I've kept the top B quite, fir well, fairly low anyway, because I don't think, like I said, it's not weed or anything like that. There's no need to push it, you know, six, seven inches up the up the tubing. Um, in terms of the, the sort of rig, I won't go into too much detail. You've seen it a thousand times on this channel. You can probably already say it before I even say it on the camera now, is it's the fluorocarbon D-rig. I use it absolutely everywhere. Again, I caught on it on the last video. I caught on it on pretty much most videos that we do, to be honest. I absolutely love this rig and it's my favorite. In terms of my hook bait, I'm just using a fluoro wafter. Again, we're probably in that time of year now where you should probably be moving over to max the hatch baits, but I still think for me it's important just to have a little bit of visual element into your hook bait. Now I could replace that with a standard manila boiler and top it off with a bit of corn for a bit of visual, but I have that much confidence in these little pink wafters that I just didn't feel like I needed to change at the moment. Um, so yeah, that's kind of it. That's my helicopter setup. Um, that's my rig and that's my hook bait. Now the reason that all that ties together is because of the main emphasis of this challenge is obviously the PVA challenge. So for me, obviously Matty rigged the challenge, so I've ended up coming out sort of second in the uh, in the mini challenge that we did earlier. I've ended up with the PVA mesh system and the PVA nuggets. So for this particular setup, I'm obviously going to opt for the PVA nuggets. So because obviously with the helicopter setup, you're kind of reliant on the lead to plug in first and then the hook bait to follow after. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to put two pieces of Peter Signet PVA uh, nuggets on there. Say that bit again. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to put some Signet PVA nuggets over my hook bait. I'm going to trap the hook and everything in place so I know that it's absolutely perfect. 
and that's basically all I'm going to do to chuck it out there. So what's going to happen, like you said, if you're sort of unfamiliar with helicopter setups, is the lead's going to plug in first, the rig will sit up perfectly just like that, and then as the foam melts when the water's still quite warm, so it shouldn't take very long, that'll just kick out and sit perfectly, leaving a, a, a you know a hook bait perfectly balanced on top of all the free offerings that I've put out there as well. In terms of the baiting strategy, I don't often spot if I'm being perfectly honest, but for this particular session, I've got some 12 millers, I've got some mixed in smaller pellets, I've got a mixture of uh, size boilers basically, and that sort of, you know, doesn't really lend itself to throwing sticks. So basically what I've just done is I've put all that into a, into a bag, put that into my spod, and I've put at the moment probably, I'd say 10 to 15, I didn't really count, but round about, let's call it 13. The lucky number 13, I've put a number of spods out there across the island in front of me. So hopefully, um, like I said, that'll do me bite. So what I'll do is I'll chuck this rod out now and then we'll talk you through the other rod and uh, yeah, hopefully we can get a big fat carp. So moving on to the left rod, obviously like I've just explained with the helicopter setup cast into the island, this room I have done a little bit of time in and obviously about an hour ago when I actually turned up, I was just having a chat with my dad around sort of which swim to pick and everything like you do. And there's a fish that crashed out to my left hand side. There's a lovely sort of, I won't say reed line, it's quite again, dense vegetated margin. Um, and the fish just crashed out head and shoulders twice. Really nice sort of looking sort of half linear style fish. Um, so obviously you can't ignore signs like that, even though it's a syndicate ticket, no matter where you go in the world, if the fish are telling you where they are, you've got a fish from there. So again, because I know that it's fairly clean out there, this is staying on a cog setup. I have chucked it out there just once just obviously get the sort of feel for how far away it is and i've got it wrapped up at about 13 wraps so yeah that's obviously on a cog setup in terms of the rig it's a rig that sort of i've used you know plenty of times in france but i don't often tend to use it in england if i'm being truthful and that's just a standard combi rig with a blowback style setup obviously more importantly for this part of the challenge i've obviously drawn the pva mesh as well now oops now, obviously, you know, I didn't have to go down the sort of uh, mesh route and then the nugget route, as long as I can sort of catch a fish on both. It doesn't really matter. However, you know, I've put a little bit of scattering of bait out there. It's going on a hard spot. So all I've done there is I've got a sort of mesh bag of um, sort of house pellet that they feed here at the syndicate. So the fish are used to that kind of pellet as well. You know, I've been pre-baiting quite a lot of different spots for another series that you'll see later on in the year. So I know that the fish are sort of read on that. So I've got a small sort of golf ball size sort of mesh bag on there. That ticks the box if I can catch on that. In terms of the hook bait, I've just gone for a standard manila boiler because I've mixed up the pellets with manila boilers as well. And then you'll see as well, I have got nugget four, so technically that would tick two, but I'm not going to class it as two. The only reason that I've done that as well is because that just traps the hair from spinning around the hook during the cast. It's not there to aid the hook because the weight won't do anything with the bag. It's not there for any other reason just to trap the hair. So yeah, that's what's going to go out there now. So we'll uh, shut up and we'll chuck it out in the pond. So we're just heading into the first evening now. It's definitely dropped in temperature, but still really confident. It looks absolutely prime for a bite right now. It's stopped raining, it's still overcast, and that tends to be looking at the weather reports for the weekend ahead. That seems to be what we're gonna have for most of the weekend. The pressure is reducing as we get into probably mid afternoon on Saturday into Saturday evening. So yeah, confidence is much higher the further we go into the weekend. Seen a few fish crash out, they're just beyond where I'm fishing at the minute, over to a peg called Peg 13. Not far from the far bank on Peg 13 to be fair, but like I said, just a bit out of my range and I'm not really allowed to be casting that far over to that end of the lake. But 
it is a, it isn't a massive place, so I'm pretty confident that the fish will start to move round. And fingers crossed, they come just into my area and start to have a little feed. So I'm not going to bring the rods in now. They're absolutely prime. The bang on the spots that I want. Put a couple of spawns over each spot of mixed spoilies and pellets that the from the fishery itself. So fingers crossed, we can have one through the night. If not. I'll probably own update again now this evening and I'll update you in the morning to what's gone on through the evening and the night. Good morning. Now, despite me and Matty going into the night last night, really confident the conditions, you know, although sort of slightly wet, you know, they were sort of really lending themselves to, to good carping conditions. We had low air pressure for the first time in literally probably about two months. You know, we had a sort of really nice sort of gentle breeze on the water. It just, everything looked ready for a bite. And yeah, unfortunately the challenge has got off to the, probably the poorest start because none of us have actually caught anything. Um, and I say that because obviously I've been around to Mighty Swim, he's not awake yet, but I can tell obviously he's not had anything, so yeah, it's been a bit of a disappointing start to be totally honest. Now, it is worth mentioning that we are on the more difficult water, let's say, on our syndicate ticket, and I think, you know, catching four fish in one session was going to be a tall ask anyway. However, you know, the whole point of this series is it is a bit of a challenge, so... At the end of the day, the challenge that we picked with the sort of couple of melts, it wasn't exactly the most sort of outrageous challenge in terms of the water that we've picked as well, because most of the PVA systems we do use anyway. And like I said, to be honest, it's not over yet. You know, we're still sort of in the, the peak bite time for this particular water, and we've got another night as well. So, you know, it's not, I don't want to seem too old doom and gloom, but it is still early morning. Um, but yeah, I just thought that last night, it, it, it felt right for it, if you know what I mean. And I thought that somebody would have one. And from, from initial inspections, it seems that there's four of us on the lake at the moment and none of us have caught. So that leads us to now, to be honest. We've woke up this morning. It's a really nice carp in misty morning. Um, it still looks really good for a bite, if I'm being totally honest with you. But like I said, as it stands at the moment, we haven't managed to catch anything. So, yeah, fingers crossed. Like I said, the water's still warm. The temperature's still, even though it's wet and it's sort of quite moist in the air, We've still got the conditions on our side. So yeah, I'm going to finish this brew. I'll uh, enjoy the morning and we'll uh, catch up with you guys later on. So after doing that update, probably no longer than half an hour ago, me and Matty were just having a little social. Oh, don't go in there. Get out of that line. It's a comment. Sorry guys, I'm just concentrating. Oh, I'm in the tree. Yes. Bosh. <laughs> so that is PVA mesh bag ticked off, mate. Yes.
hear me? One, two, one, two. No, Dread, if you can hear me. Yeah. So, like I just said in this morning's update, it was still bike time, and although that the challenge hadn't got off to a good start all about an hour ago, it's absolutely magical what one fish can do, not only for confidence, but for the challenge as well. Because I would say now that we're sort of really back on, sort of on track for the challenge. So that's the PVA mesh bag for me ticked off with this lovely 19 and a half pound common. And it was really unexpected, but we'll take it anyway. So yeah, that leaves me now with my PVA nuggets. So I'm going to probably change my rigs, which I'll talk about after this fish. I'll change my setup and everything to obviously accommodate the PVA nuggets. And we'll get the rod back out there. We'll talk about any sort of changes, tactics and everything. And hopefully Matty can get one sort of today and then the challenge is back underway. So yeah, what I'll probably do is take a few stills of this fish, slip her back and uh, yeah, talk all things sort of tactic chains then. Okay, so we're now approaching mid-morning and I am deciding on a bit of a change of a tactic. I did originally say I was going to stick with two rods on solid bags, but from what I've seen late last night, early hours this morning, the fish don't seem to be where I thought they were originally. They are slightly pushed into the middle of the lake and they are showing, so I am going to opt for a different tactic now. Still sticking with obviously the PVA methods and I'm going to go for using my choice PVA tape. So I'm opting for now. Simple heli lead setup onto a combi link setup using the PVA tape which I've chosen. I've got a small little stringer tied up and then using a little pink wafter. Reason I'm going for this instead of the solid bags is due to seeing them already in the area where I think they are, they are showing. I don't want to put too much bait out so I'm going for a little single pink pop up couple of boilies around it knowing the fish are already in the vicinity and hoping I can just pick one up quite quickly so I'm gonna flick that out now like I said the are you taking the mech <laughs> I mean why are the people ringing me door when I'm mid film like I said I think they're already in the vicinity so I don't want to put too much bait on top of them I just want a couple of boilies something visual so I'm gonna flick this out on the spot and fingers crossed we can get a bite pretty quickly Good afternoon so pretty much since i returned that fish despite the weather forecast not saying that it was going to rain it's done nothing but absolutely lash it down for the last four or five hours um it's probably done know half past one two o'clock now something like that and uh, yeah we've had a sort of 10 15 minute gap so i just thought i'd give you a bit of an update as to where we are there's not a lot really that's happened if i'm being truthful there's been a few you know a few fish continue to crash on that left hand margin where i'm fishing but there's been absolutely nothing in the island in front of me. There's not been a sign, there's not been fizzing, there's not been bubbles, there's been absolutely nothing. So I might have a rethink tonight. If I do, obviously I'll let you guys know. If I don't, then obviously I'll let you know regardless. Um, yeah, as we sort of you know what the plans are for this evening as we head into the night. So uh, yeah, I'll leave the update there and we'll catch you later on this evening.
you can hear me from over there. It's always quite difficult when you don't have the audio for me and over there. Uh, and yeah, basically all I'm doing now, there's been a gap in the weather because it's been absolutely battering it down today, if I'm being honest. And it wasn't really forecast, but where I'm stood now, obviously on this left-hand margin, there's this yellow tree, which obviously I'm using as a bit of a marker. And basically what's happened is a few fish, you know, I've seen a fairly decent fish as well, a nice mirror that me and Matty both saw loop out the water twice, but along this entire margin, there's been a few fish jumping. And obviously that fish that I caught this morning came from this spot as well, so... Yeah, I can't go much further left than where I am now because like I said, if you've seen the previous videos there's um, like an orange pipe in the water and that indicates the boundary from this swim to the outer bounds area which is to my left and obviously the fish do feel safe in there and I do feel that because the fish are in there that I'm trying to entice them out with the bait so through the day obviously the two trees to my left have been crashing obviously up here and um, so all I'm going to do now is just obviously while I've had a break in the weather is use some of these sort of feed pellets from the syndicate anyway so the fish are used to being reared on these pellets I use them anyway, I use them in the mesh bag which obviously helped me catch that fish earlier so yeah, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sort of spread them up and down this margin hopefully get the fish clubbing around and uh, yeah later on this evening hopefully we can catch another one plenty of bait there, <clears throat> although it seemed like a lot of bait, I was only putting in five or six at a time and only sort of fairly small pellets, I think they're about eight mil, so they're not massive, um, so yeah, it seems like a lot of bait, but obviously what I'm, the idea behind this type of bait is that if they club around, I find that the fish are much easier to catch than if you put it on a concentrated area, because they're not as preoccupied as coming down onto one spot, so yeah, I'll shut up waffling, and uh, we'll get the rods out for this evening, and uh, take it from there. That's the one. Donk, that's the one. Right, well, not what I expected <laughs> at probably two minutes past midnight. I didn't even know there was any grasses in here, to be honest. I heard rumors and inklings that there was one, but I'd never ever heard of anyone catching it. And if I'm honest, more relieved that it wasn't an eel because the bite was I don't know questionable at best I honestly thought I'd been breamed out or eeled out and uh, yeah eventually it did ping out the line clip and it did take a bit of line so yeah I don't know if you want to call it this but she's just gone 21 pound and was it 10 ounces 10 21 10, 10 so just shy of 22 pounds so uh, yeah pleasantly surprised if I'm being honest so yeah, obviously everyone knows if you've caught a grass carp before, they're absolutely renowned for smashing you to bits when they get on the bank. And I'm not going to pretend that this guy hasn't because prior to the camera rolling, he's properly just smashed me to bits. So just in case I look like a fool on camera, I'm going to get him straight back. And I would say that's a foam nugget ticked off. I know there's some true carpists that would argue it's not a carp. However, the grass carp is part of the king carp family. I'm calling it a pass for me. So hopefully, I've still got a rod in the water, Matty's still got a chance, it's early doors, so yeah, hopefully we can get another one. Real do. I'm going to eat. What are you going to do? Well, there's a cable here. Oh, so I it up. You absolutely cannot predict the British weather. So yesterday when it was forecast for cloudy, sort of clear skies most of the day, we got torrential downpours for all of the day, which sort of really hampered the fishing. This morning it was forecast, you know, torrential rain, you know, big downpours. It looked like we we're going to be packing up in the rain. And now it's summer again. And now we woke up and it's just cracking flags. So it's been a nice pack down, but unfortunately since that grass carp this morning, um, yeah, nothing's really nothing happened. Nothing at all. It's been quiet. Yeah, it's been, I mean, I, I was still really confident, you know, if I was a betting man, I'd have bet both fish would have come off my other rods to be perfect, honestly. I think confidence was high for all of us. I mean, with the weather conditions we've had, with the hot weather with 40 degrees last week, and then 
such a pressure drop and the rain, even though it's hindered the filming, as far as fishing goes, you'd expect it to happen. I was massively confident turning up and I was confident last night, but it just hasn't happened. And unfortunately, because of that, it's a challenge failed. Again. Again. <laughs> Um, We're off to a good start. I'm it's not going challenges. well. It's not going well. But and to be honest, as well, I felt like obviously we have got a few challenges sort of planned in the pipeline as well. And I have to say that I feel that this challenge would have been the most passable. If that's I agree. A, if that's I totally agree. I think out of all of them, yeah, this was the one I was thinking we've got a good chance of doing four fish on the bank, four methods that we're used to using and we're happy to yeah. use. And I did think it would have gone well and it would have been a challenge past this weekend, but. You can't predict it, can you? Yeah, it is what it is, unfortunately. But yeah, as ever, if you'd like this video, it'd be a massive appreciation from obviously myself and Matty. If you wouldn't mind pressing that like button on this video, comment any feedback. We love interacting with you guys as well. So, you know, how would you have fished it? Things like that. Anything in terms of, you know, tips, tactics, anything. We just really like, so, you know, we do, we do these videos for you, really. So, you know, we really, I mean, we both really like sort of interacting with you, whether it's social media, Instagram. Yeah, absolutely. Get us up on Instagram. In the comments below. Um, and obviously, more importantly, if you press that subscribe button, because as well, there's still 92% of you that haven't subscribed to the channel. So yeah, if you really wouldn't mind pressing subscribe, it'd be a real help. So yeah, obviously until the next one, um, we'll probably be, yeah, we've probably got a few more videos in the in the future. So yeah, if you wouldn't mind pressing that subscribe button and uh, press that bell icon as well, so when we do upload new new videos, you'll um, be the first to know. Yeah. Well, other than that, mate, challenge failed, and hopefully we can get a film done with a challenge passed. Yeah. Or, on to the next one. Let's see you next time.